So Anthony and Ivano, thank you so much for joining us today at the upcoming and um, of course a huge congratulations on your film, oh, The Flood. Thank you. Thank um, you. you know, before we get started, would you like to give us a, for people who perhaps aren't particularly familiar with the storyline and the premise, um, give us a f summary as to what the film is about? Okay, so uh, it's a film about um, a refugee and an immigration officer who um, meet in the interview and <clears throat> as the film progresses we learn more about both their lives and their journeys about how they've come to be here. It's, uh, it's a human story obviously based around the refugee crisis and it's, um, it's a story that I hope will ask questions and raise awareness of, of the plight of a refugee. And how did the project come about? Because I understand, um, Anthony, you had actually volunteered at the Kelly Migrant Camps along yeah. with your screenwriter, Helen Kingston, and Luke Healy, the producer. Mm -hmm. um, was the project born as a result of your own personal experiences at these camps? And could you take us through? Oh, yeah, so Helen actually read an article in a newspaper about this tragic uh, event at Tilbury Docks where um, a shipping container turned up of refugees and some of them had died inside and the others were banging on the on the side to try and get people to rescue them and she thought it would make a good stage play but I said oh no you've got an independent you know one room thriller there uh, and then it sort of developed uh, we made it bigger we went into the lorry park brought in the driver and stuff and it eventually became the whole story of the refugee crisis um, and when we were researching it obviously we wanted to do these people justice and we wanted to make sure their stories were told correctly, so we interviewed um, refugees in, in Calais, and we also ref interviewed um, immigration officers and other people surrounding the refugee crisis, just so we could um, put the most truthful and realistic spin on the film. Mm -hmm. And um, how did Ivana? How did you uh, come to be involved with the project? I mean, what was it about uh, Hale's character which attracted you to the role? Um, I think the humanity in the script. Um, really drew me to it. Um, you know, I first of all wasn't too sure about doing the role, and then my agent said, no, "Actually, have another look at it." And upon there, I fell in love with it. Um, it screamed at me as a story that needed to be told, um, and gives an open, very tender perspective. Well, key in to the personal experiences, not only for the immigration officers. Only for Haile and his 5,000 kilometer journey across sea and desert and everything. Um, and I think it's quite good at being epic and tiny mm. um, in, his, in his storytelling. Um, but you know, also, you know, being of Ugandan and Wendy's descent, I think the film that also kind of serves to humanize this story that I think a lot of, well, some um, popular media outlets and some politicians today um, quite easily dehumanise, and with terms such as the flood and swarms of immigration, mm -hmm. and somehow not taking responsibility or avoiding um, avoiding asking the real question, which I think is, um, what are these people running from? And what can we do to save that and save the little people having to clean up the mess, you know, the police officers, the, the lorry drivers, the um, immigration officers. So I think, yeah, this film sort of opens up that, the floor for that conversation to be had and I'm very happy to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. I feel like the, the film um, it addresses that dichotomy between humanity and morality. Um, through the eyes and ears of, of its immigration officers, um, Wendy and Philip. Yeah. And also it sort of emphasises the fact that, or elaborates on the fact that being, uh, n having the right sort of principles and abiding by the law doesn't automatically equate to mm. having the um, right ethics and, and having the correct human values. So exactly. it really is one of those... It's an extremely complicated situation exactly. and there is no you know, golden solution. You can't just make, wave a magic wand and fix it. Uh, and it was very important for us to humanise um, those people, the immigration officers, the lorry drivers, uh, as, as well as the refugees, because, you know, no one wants to do that job. It, you know, civil servant rejecting people, hearing these horrible stories every day and then having to, like, deny them entry. 
because they didn't have a form filled in or they couldn't tell you their birth maiden name or whatever the whatever it is you know National anthem. <laughs> yeah and and these guys um you know they have quotas and the government are leaning on them and and there's social pressure from you know these media outlets and things uh, and it's a difficult horrible job mm. i just the more i could make it just more about two people in one room connecting i think the better really I think shooting it was very taxing as well, quite difficult and horrible as well. I mean, I in many ways it was, were. yeah, emotionally mm. and psychologically taxing. I mean, quite often we had, mom I had moments where all of the artifice and all of the artistry and the the magic of it kind of faded away and quite literally you were in a, sleeping in a stairwell being attacked in a, mm. in a port loo and then, you know, hiding away in the back of a lorry or even attempting to hold onto the undercarriage of a lorry for five seconds, let alone five miles. Exactly. Um, and I suppose the people who you were acting with, um, some of them were actual real life refugees as well. Uh, for example, in the, in the Calais, in the migrant camps. Um, and we, 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 uh, we, we only really had actors. I mean, the only people yeah, we've, the, okay. yeah, I think we took the responsibility but to the only. The nature of employing yeah. people right now, unfortunately, is very it's difficult. Very yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. But, um, all of our source material and all of our um, research is, is, you know, straight from their horses, but I sure. think it would have been a little bit too far to... Of course, I can to sort of veer over We did have a wonderful uh, Eritrean uh, sort of Language advisor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was really <laughs> good. And again, he didn't want to be named or anything because he had flown or fled the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was, again, it was it, for us, it was just about realism and, and, and getting it right. And, and you did really well working on all the accents and... and mm. And it was just about putting that level of detail into the film to do these, these stories justice. Brilliant. And, and last question. It's um, in one of the sequences uh, when the fellow asylum seeker, asylum seeker speaks with Hayley, Hayley and says um, that you know, people, like life is almost basically a game of give and take and people only um, give you something when they want something in return. And that really resonates. Um, and I just wondered whether your message in, in making this film was basically to use the refugee crisis as a way of shedding light on kind of core fundamental human values which have been um, lost over the course of time as, as, as kind of greed and, and um, all these kind of negative traits have taken over and whether the, the, the point of this film is to sort of look at the darker sides of mm -hmm. mankind and um, encourage people to be a more, a more compassionate and understanding towards others before um, judging them because everybody is going through their own struggles, be it external yeah. or, ex or internal. So that it's is like a having very a interesting question and, and one of the thoughts which came up with me actually was like uh, if like our service industry didn't need unskilled labourers would we have let any refugees in at all? Mm -hmm. Like I think it is it, this is horrible sort of capitalist economic sort of value to people. Mm -hmm. mm. It, it's, it's also it is a call on that humanity, and it is a call to the small percentile that may have the ability to be able to do something and don't, and maybe government organizations that are turning their back or, or passing the buck or ignoring. Um, the presence of the jungle, for example, and, and, and meeting it with force as opposed to, mm. you know, discussing and then some compassion, yeah. which I think would benefit everyone in the situation somehow. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it is it is a call to hopefully senses and to um, for people to step up and focus and and, fo and, fo and focus on the humanity in the situation because this won't stop. And things are still happening, mm -hmm. and as we say in the film, they're not down the jungle and they keep on coming back. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah it's just time to address this problem, the source, I guess. Really. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, thank you so much for your time cool. and for taking the time to speak. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.